this video is to show you how to put the tone stack into the the tone stack module into the invento box. We turn the invento box around when it's open there and we align the tone stack module so that the words are well you can see the words are upside down all the lettering is upside down on the fuzz factory and super hard on module so we're going to make sure it's upside down on the tone stack module as well because it's all oriented the same way. Butt it up against the fuzz factory so it's lined up and then plug in that upper row so that it goes into row I like the other ones do. And now you can put your thumb on it and just pop it in there nice and snug until it goes all the way down. And now we will proceed to wire up the power connections which are over here, 9 volt and ground, and then the base mid-range and treble connections. Now we put the base mid-range and treble controls on the opposite side from the fuzz factory and super hard on so that we could use the other row of knobs, the lower row of knobs. It's easier to, to uh, wire it up. You don't have to run the wires over the top of the module. We'll select a uh, yellow and an orange wire to hook up the uh, power first. L10 is where we will plug in the one end of the orange wire. And the other end will go to the black row for ground. So just go straight across from L10 to the black row. Plug that in there. There you go. L10. Now that's uh, ground is connected to the black row. We'll use the yellow wire to go from L9, the plus 9 volt connection, to the red row. So we hook up positive power. The tone stack is powered because it has buffers in it. It has a buffer in the front end and in the back end so that it uh, can be used with any module you want. Now we'll proceed to hook up the pots. The first one we're going to hook up is the base pot. It's a 1 meg and we're going to have to select two of the red wires, the longer red wires. Now we turn the entire invento box around so we can work on those connections. We're going to start with the middle connection on the 1 meg pot. The 1 meg pot is the third one from the left. It's going to be the base control. And the middle connection, we'll plug one end of a red wire into that. And as soon as we do that, we should grab a little silver jumper, one of those plain metal jumpers, because we need to stick a jumper into that pot. It's not entirely necessary to put in this jumper. The unit will function without it. However, if you happen to turn that 1 meg pot every day for the next thousand years, it might get scratchy, and this helps reduce scratchiness if you put this jumper in on that pot. So we'll plug in this jumper so that it goes from the center, the middle connection, the middle jack, to the left hand jack, the one that's labeled uh, CW. It's kind of hard to shove it in there, but it can be done. You're shoving in two wires into the same jack, the middle jack there, but it, they fit. It works fine. And now to continue on with the next connection, it goes up to K7. The best way to do this is to bend the wire so that it goes in parallel, pointing along the row or a column of 7. It looks nice and neat that way and it stays nice and flat. Now hold your thumb on one end well, actually, he's not doing it right now, but it's, it's best to hold your thumb on the pot or your other hand's thumb on the pot to keep the wires in place so they don't pop out while you're pushing in the upper one. Because if you're starting with fresh wires and they're stiff like that, yeah, K7, not K6. Thanks, Ashley. That was good. <laughs> bend, that, uh, bend that wire nice and right angle, right around the edge there. And make sure it's pushed in tight there. And it should stay nicely once you've got it nice and bent. Uh, yeah, that's right. We're, we connected to K7. The next connection we're going to make is going to be to K8, which is going to go into the remaining jack, the right-hand jack on the 1 meg pot. So we'll plug that end in. And then use your thumb from your other hand to hold those wires in to the pot while you bend it and go into K8. Make sure you get a nice sharp right angle as you bend it along the edge of the tray so that there's no stress on those wires causing them to pop out of the jacks. 
we're going to continue on to the mid-range pot. A mid-range pot uses all three of the jacks. We'll select three of the longer black wires. And we'll work first with the right hand jack on the A20K pot, which is the mid-range pot. That one goes to row K column 6. Use your thumb from your other hand to hold the wire in while you're putting it in and then give it a nice sharp bend along the edge of the tray like usual. Make sure those wires stay in. And continue on moving toward the left center hole there, the middle one. The middle jack goes up to the next open spot, K5. And the leftmost jack, the one that's labeled CW, will go into K4. As you might imagine, we have to do exactly the same thing with the treble control. And those will be the next three holes to the left, the next three jacks to the left uh, in the row K. We use a red wire, short one. We start with column 12. We'll go to row K, K12. Make sure that's nice and snug in there. And we'll jump that over to 